don't know what's up. Okay. All right. Yesterday we left off with, I think I did the roulette wheel. I think there was 30, 38 with numbers 1 through 36. Y'all help me out. Tell me if I'm not on the right. Okay. So, roulette wheel. Wheel with 38 slots. One through 36 and zero and double zero, which are not even or odd. And they asked, what is the probability of, what was it, even or odd? What did it ask? If the number is odd or even, what did it say? Odd. And then it asked for the odds against. Or odds in favor, I don't know. I think it's odds against. Okay, that's what we want. And this is what we're given. All right, so, Ms. Smith, can you see any of this? Yeah, after you started recording, it, the white screen popped up, so I can oh. see it now. I don't know why I did that. Oh, well. Usually let you see the white screen and oh well, I don't know. It's the Russians. Yeah, the Russians and Coney and who else is who else is the reason Donald Trump for president? What else? What other excuses? All kinds of excuses. All right, so. First of all, the first thing you need to do is decide what is success. All right, because you're going to have to, success has to do with odds against and odds in favor. So in this case, the odds of I mean, the success is probability of odd. So Probability of odd means that you win, right? In other words, if you hit an odd number, you win money. So that means the probability of not odd is what? What's the opposite of success? Okay, so this is our success. And this is our failure. Now, the only reason I'm doing this is because I'm having to deal with this. Now, if I just ask for the probability, then I just ask for the probability. But once you ask for the odds against, you have to take this into effect. All right? So that's just something you need to do second. You need to find the probability. The probability of an odd would be equal to 18 over 38. And then the probability of not odd is equal to 20 over 38. And there's your probability. That's what it's asking for right here. The reason I did the complement of this is because you're going to need it in step three. Third, odds against is equal to the probability of failure over the probability of what? Success. We need to write that down. Odds against is the probability of failure over the probability of success. Now I want you to take those fractions and plug them in. 
Notice I have not told you to use decimals because if you use decimals, you have to depend on the calculator to figure the problem. But if you use fractions, all you have to do is multiply by the reciprocal and you're going to see that the denominator and the numerator are going to cancel out, which will make the math a whole lot easier, unless you can't do third grade math. So, what is the probability of failure? 20 over what? 20 over 38. What is the probability of success? So my odds of EF is equal to 20 over 38 multiplied by 38 over 18. And 38 to do what? So my odds of EF is 20 to 18. Well, we're going to talk about odds of EF in this class today. I'm going to talk about how to actually apply the odds against, but a lot of people don't have any idea how to apply the odds against. All right, see if anybody's got any questions on the probability. Nobody has any questions. All right, now, I'm going to put something on the board. I'm going to Google something right quick. Because I don't want to write it because I'll have somebody in here that will correct me about how many eggs and how many. So I'm going to just pull up a recipe of cookies because that's what I use. But I get tired of the people that walk on water correcting me. So I'm going to say cookie recipe. Where's the cookie recipe? Where's the recipe? <sighs> there we go. And take my handy dandy snippet. What? Snipping tool. All I want is a recipe. I don't want to cook anything. All I want to do is just snip it out and use it. Stop. Snip. Yeah. All right, there's recipe. And capture. And minimize. Pull up the whiteboard. Make sure all of this gets smaller. Now, go to the next page. Now, the reason I'm doing this, you'll see in just a minute. Because I get so many people that don't know how to use odds against. Take my handy dandy straight line maker. Let's put a line here. And a line here. And a line here. And a line here. All right, let's say that this recipe, now I didn't make up this recipe, so you can't correct me. I pulled it off of a website, so you can't prove the website wrong for all the people that like correcting features. Two cups, well, let's say that this recipe makes a dozen cookies, or two dozen cookies, which means 24 what? cookies. All right, and let's say that you want to make 48 cookies. 
All right, if you make 48 cookies, then what do you do? Why do you double? Why do you double? Where do you get that double from? Okay, how'd you get twice? Or 48 divided by divided by 24 is 2. Okay, so I'm going to multiply everything by 2, so that'd be 4 cups of flour, 1 teaspoon, 1 teaspoon, 3 quarters is a 1 and a half cups or whatever in 2 cups. Everybody agree with that? Mm -hmm. What if I want to make 72 cookies? I'll wait for y'all to do the calculator. You triple it. How'd you get triple? I divide 72 by 24 and get 3, right? Okay, so that'd be 6 cups. And uh, 1 and a half times 3 is 1 and a half. 1 1.5. 1 1.5. 3 quarters times 3. Is the three quarters times two is one and a half, and then add another is two point two and a quarter, and then three cups of. Okay, do y'all see what you're doing here? If you want 48, 48 divided by 24, you double. If you want 72, 72 divided by 24, and you triple. Well, let's say I want 63 cookies. Now, of course, most of y'all would say, we just make 72 and eat 10 of them, or whatever the case may be. <laughs> okay, yes, that would be the most reasonable. But mathematically, what do you do? You do the same thing that you did with those. You divide it by 24. And then you multiply that number times your ingredients, right? So somebody take your calculator, and, and let's just do this. 63 divided by 24 is what? 2.63. And you're going to multiply that by all of it. And you get 2.63 times 2. Okay? And 2.63 times 1 uh, times 25. And so on. So everybody can pretty much agree that you take the number that you want and divide by the number that you make. The recipe makes, and that gives you some some constant that you want. What do you do with that constant? The two, the three, and the two point six three. What do you do with those constants? What do you do with them? You multiply by the ingredients, right? If I agree with that, what in the heck does this have to do with odds against? Well, let's say, hold on. Let's say that you Let's say that the question says, goes on to say, you bet $500 on the wheel. What do you win? with the calculated whatever with the calculated odds. So what do you do? Well this is the same thing as twenty over what? 
So what is this? It's the same thing as your what? It's the same thing as your what? Huh? I heard somebody say, oh, okay. It's the same thing as your what? The constants. So what do you do with the odds against? You multiply it by the money that you bet. Just like your recipe. Now you gotta remember that because if you don't remember that, you don't get confused. This right here is just like the odds against. Right here, right here. So you see it in fraction form. So you take that number and you multiply it by how much money you bet. So somebody take your calculator and take $500 and multiply by 20 over 18. And what do you get? That means you all need to do it on the calculator right now. I did that on purpose. Get all the sixes, make y'all all cringe. All right? So, how much money did you make? $166.67. Now let's talk about odds a minute. What do you consider those odds? Very high or very low? Very low. Okay. Meaning that you what? You're not going to make a lot of what? Money. But what if you go to the racetrack? Alright? And let's say you go to the racetrack. And when you go to the racetrack, you're betting on a horse. And that horse is called Loser Loretta. And Loser Loretta is not much of a thoroughbred. And she is 75 to 1 odds. And you need to pay the power bill. And you ain't got no money, so you bet $100 on Loser Loretta. <laughs> no, the power bill is like $200. <laughs> You got to go with the mentality of today, okay? Not the mentality of 20 years ago. The mentality of 20 years ago is go out and get a job and get another hundred dollars. The mentality of today is how can I not work and get another two hundred dollars? Okay, you think of the mentality today. Everybody gets a what? Everybody gets a trophy. Yep, that's right. So entitlement. So you bet $100 on Loser Loretta, and Loser Loretta wins. Then what do you get? What? 7500 $7, Now, why do you win so much money? Because the odds are what? High. Now, there's two entities in America that are not into charity. They despise charity. What are they? The banks and Las Vegas. All right? Why? Because their survival depends on the, the most money they can put in their banks at the least cost. All right? So, the bank, is the bank going to offer you more than 1.5% or 1.5 points on a dollar? No, because they don't want to double your money, do they? That would be two, wouldn't it? Two times $50 is what? $100 in the savings account. Two times $100 is $200. So does the bank want to double your money? No. 
do Las Vegas. Does Las Vegas want to offer uh, high odds, 75 to 1, and make and fix the decks to where you win all the time? Why? Because they'll go out of what? So, what's the correlation between odds and probability? If the odds are high, what does that result in? Low what? I had to eat gas this morning and check my lottery to see if I won $38 million. <laughs> How many lottery tickets do I buy? One. Why? Because the probability of buying one is the same probability as buying a million. We'll get to that with permutations and combinations. But I buy one ticket. And I go in there and I check it. And of course, it's losing. Why? Because the probability of me winning $38 million is very what? Very low. But what's the outcome if I do hit it? $38 million, which twist 20% of 38 million, that'd be 1.8 million, be 3.6 million, which would be 4 million off of off of 38 million, which would be 34 million. So I'd blow 4 million, put 30, 30 million in all kinds of trust and all kinds of, that's what I do. And it'd take me a while, no, it wouldn't. It'd take me a week to blow that 4 million. <laughs> I'd have a brand new Glow Boy, a brand new V8, a brand new Track Ho, a brand new. I'd have I'd have all kind of hoes. Uh, that's a joke. Some people would go, he said whore in class. A track hoe and a back hoe is not the hoe that you're thinking of. All right. Anyway, if the odds are high or the odds are low. You have a what? You might remember the poker machines that used to be in Anderson. Poker machines as Anderson is like crack cocaine to to a to a to a bunch of to a trailer park. Okay? Now I hate to say that I lived in a trailer for years, but that's the truth. Um Back when we had those poker machines, everybody brother played them. They 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 had the quarter machines that had quarters and dollars and things like that, and then you had the nickel machines. Now, why did they put the nickel machines in? Because the probability of winning a small amount of money got higher, but you had to put in what more nickels. All right, same thing. If you put, same thing with the scratch-off tickets, if you ever played scratch-off tickets. All right, you got your dollar ticket, which is a dollar. But what is the probability of you winning $10 million on a dollar ticket? Very, very, very low. The only thing you'll win off a dollar ticket is another dollar problem. All right, so you can't, remember mathematically, you can't have your cake and eat it too. And that's true not only in mathematics, that's true in a lot of things. Right, Mr. Marvell? You can't have your cake and eat it too. That's like, you know, okay, I'm only going to spend $1, and I expect to win a million dollars. No, it don't work that way. Okay. You play it for enjoyment and say, wouldn't it be great if I won $15 off this $1 ticket? That's how you play the lottery. You don't play it like, I expect to win $28 million by buying one lottery ticket. You play it for fun, okay? You don't go in there and buy a million tickets because it doesn't work. So, if the odds are high, chances are you're not going to win. But if you do win, you're going to get a good what? A good payday. If the odds are low... You'll probably win, but you're not going to win what? A lot. And that's the way the world works. I guess the old saying, what is the old saying? Mm -hmm. 
Mutton's free. And that plays into that. Nothing's free. I love these people that get on get on TV and say, free health care. <laughs> That's just a lie. The only thing free that I can think of is air. Air that we breathe. That's about it. Because water is not free anymore. Okay? Water you have to pretty much pay for. But nothing's free. And I teach my kids that. And they think I'm crazy until they get about 18, 19 years old. And my daughter is figuring that out. Nothing's free. So these people that tell you, free tuition. Yeah. All right. So who's got a question on this one? Anybody got one? All right. So let's look at some more stuff. Let's look at a couple of questions. See if I can pull up a question without blowing up the computer. There we go. And one, three. And I'm just going to go to study plan. What chapter are we in? Seven in this book? Yeah. Is it A? All but D. All but D. Let's see if they got, I don't know if they go into odds in 7A or not. Let's see what kind of questions they got. Anybody got a book handy? See if they got anything about odds in the book in this section. Might be in 7D. Oh, you got, is there an odds? Is there a roulette table in there somewhere? Yeah, that's the best problem in the world. This book wouldn't have it. I'm trying to find one that I would put on the test. Right now, I don't see too many. Is odds against in 7A? Yes, no, maybe. It is? Okay. Let me... Uh, calculate odds. There we go. Three questions. Find the odds for and the odds against the event of rolling a fair die and getting a 1, a 5, a 6, or a 3. Are these four different questions? Is that what they're saying? Yeah. Okay. That's too easy. Find the odds for. I know. The odds against your bet are five to four. Really? That's the only three questions they give you. That's a farce. Hold on a minute. That's ridiculous. Math 120. Study plan. Uh, chapter contents, chapter four, four point one, study plan, no four point probably four point two. No, they moved it. Oops, chapter five. Let me check. Maybe chapter five. Yep. Sorry, hold on. Five. Hmm. I'm real off. I'm trying to find you some questions. There's an additional rule. Where is should be five point one.
Yes, I don't. Give me a second, I'll find us some questions. Just hold on a second. This is a new book in 120, and I'm not used to it yet. I think it's important that you know how to calculate odds. It doesn't look like they do it in this section. Yeah, but that's that that's uh that's combinations and permutations. We ain't got there yet. All right, there's one. Had to go to the book to pull it out. That's one we just did. Okay. I'll just make one of that. I'm tired of looking. Eventually they'll take all the hard questions out and put all easy questions and you'll pass the class with an A. table, roulette wheel, whatever, has four slots, one through 42, and zero, double zero, parentheses, zero, and double zero are Neither, neither, odd, or even. A. Find the probability of winning with an odd number B find the odds against winning what is the outcome of betting hundred dollars on an odd number. There's a test question. So if you can do this this test question like the one we just did, then you should be okay for the test because they're not gonna give you one that's harder than this one. The other ones I've seen ain't even half of this one. Our retention levels are very high. Even a blind pig finds an acorn every now and then. You make the class easy enough, everybody what?
You still with us, Miss Smith? Yeah, I am. She don't fell back asleep. <laughs> Miss Smith. Yeah. I hope she's not lost. Let's see if she's texting me. I thought the cows were out or something. Yeah. Uh, I'm such a nice person. All right. So, the probability of I is equal to what? 21 over 44. And the probability of not odd is what? 23 over 44. So that's part A. Part B. Find the odds against. Well, the odds against is equal to probability of failure over the probability of success. So that's going to equal 23 over 44 divided by 21 over 44. And after a while, you start to see the pattern. Basically, it's the two numerators, right? You just cut out the 44s. Because you multiply by the reciprocal, and you start getting 23 over 21 is the odds against. And part C, if you bet $300, somebody tell me what the take home is. Okay, I'm waiting. Why didn't we take the lot home? Because you had very low odds. Now, how about finding the probability of picking a king out of that cart and then finding the odds against that and then you're going to bet $500 that you can pick a king out of that cart see what you're winning then 
trophy time. Mm. You'll get that free tuition. Miss <laughs> Smith, are you with us? Yeah, I responded Smith earlier. Cut out of town. She said, the heck with this. Miss Smith, I are you there? I responded earlier, but I don't know. <laughs> Hello. I'm still here. She's trying to communicate, but something's turned off. This stupid system don't work. Hold on. Yeah, she's still here. We can't hear you. You might have your mic turned off. Oh, I heard something. You there? I turned it back on. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. You can turn it off if you want to, so we won't hear you snoring. That's fine. <laughs> All right. We just want to make sure you're still alive. I am. Okay, good. Go back to sleep. All right. <laughs> so we got probability of winning, probability of success would be getting a what? A king, which would be four out of what? And the probability of losing would be what? Not getting a king, which would be what? So the odds against would be 48 to 4, right? Which is what? 12 to 1? You can reduce it, that's fine. And what if you bet three hundred dollars? Or what I say, five hundred? What if you bet five hundred dollars? If you pick a king out of that cards, what would you win? Six thousand. Why so much money? Because the odds against are so what? So high. Nothing's free. Or another thing, you always got to pay the piper. Or Rocky says, you want to dance, you got to pay the band. <laughs> Something's got to give. In other words, you, you can't take anything too. But you might have been doing that for 20 years, and you probably paid 20 grand for this stuff. Kind of like the lottery ticket. That's why I only buy one lottery ticket. I don't want to say I paid a hundred dollars in the last month trying to win the lottery versus ten dollars. That's why I only play one ticket. I would got the same chance if I bought a million. Okay, so that's that. That's whatever section this is. Seven point a seven a. 7 alpha, whatever. Yeah, they really they really challenge you. All right, so what about the rest of the sections? Well, let me see what time it is, see how much time I got. I got, what, 11? I got about 15 minutes. Is that what I got? All right, this is what we're going to do in the future. One, we're going to go over the additive law. The additive law is based on the word or, I think. I can't remember. I'm getting mixed up. And the additive law, you add the numerators of your probabilities. The multiplicative law You multiply your fractions, or you raise them to the power. And then three is combinations and permutations. All right? Now, look in 7 point B, or 7B, and you should see something on the additive law. And look for one of those green boxes 
It'll have the adjective law, and it'll say something about the word or or and. I can't remember. And is that plus? No, that's times. And is times. The word and is times, and or should be. Look under the additive law. Or and and. Of course, your book calls it. The and problems. They don't call it the multiplicative law. They call it the and problem because y'all don't know how to say multiplicative. I hate this book. Is that what it says? Mm -hmm. No, not that one. Yeah, it's and. Okay, you want to make sure because I get mixed up sometimes. Combinations and permutations we do on the calculator. Combination is order. No order, sorry. Permutations is order. The additive law, the additive law, there's only one thing that you have to remember. And that is, or the multiplicative law, with replacement or without replacement. We'll talk about that also. And with combinations and permutations, either no order for a combination and then order with permutation. With the additive law, always subtract, I can't spell, the overlap. The only thing you have to remember with these. Now this is what we're going to be going over the next next time we meet, and we'll probably have one more day, and then we'll have a test on Unit Two because that's it. Unit Two test covers four things: the probability law, which contains odds against and odds in favor; the additive law, the multiplicative law, and the combination and permutation law. That's it. And after that, we have the Unit Two test. And I spend a lot of time on Unit 3 because a lot of people have no idea what Unit 3 is. It's business math, which income tax, which a lot of y'all start thinking after I teach that section. Like 30% of your dollar goes to the federal government, 20 to 30%, and you don't think about it until you see it. <laughs> Everybody does, it's about 50%. Yeah. State, but the Democrats, they want more. More. So we can pay more people to work for the government. If you work for the government, then we can control you better. All right. Let me get the roll. Y'all start reading on the next couple of sections. Finish up the first section. And we will start on these sections when? Tuesday? Mm -hmm. Whatever time y'all come back, yeah. Huh? When we get to the end of, when we get to the end of permutations and combinations, that's when we'll be having a test. All right, let me call the roll, and then if y'all got any questions, I know a couple of y'all got questions. We'll go over questions. I'm Hubert. Who's lost? Lost in what? In this chapter. Well, you shouldn't be. Have you looked over the... Did you miss the first day of probability? Huh? I got to go back and look at the video. Yep, that's what... I thought you missed the day. All right, Wednesday.
Bennett's here. Burdett is here, right? Clark. Clark. Flippin. Harvell is here. Haynes. Inez. Lowry is not here. Nolan is here. Roebuck is here. Sims. Smith. Ariel, she Skyped in. Mr. Smith is here, and Miss Williams is here. Okay, continue to work on 7A, and then we'll work on 7B when y'all come back to you. Have a good weekend. Miss Smith, have a good weekend. You too.